All right, what's up guys? I'm here in Central Rock Gym, Randolph. And I have Justin Wright, the head setter of Central Rock Gym, Randolph. <laughs> we're also here with our special guest, Zoe. Hi. Today, we're gonna go over sequencing. sequencing. Sequencing is when you look and picture the route uh, or how you're going to do it before you actually get on the wall. Looking at handholds, figuring out the orientation, figuring out a plan of where to put your feet so that when you get on the wall, you can just execute the movement. The most efficient way to do it is often not the, the first thing you'll try. If you look at the route, there's a couple of tricks and tips that you can kind of figure out exactly how to do it correctly. And when you do it that right way, it just feels better. Hey Zoe, you are just about to like just get on the wall, right? But you don't have a plan. You know where the start holds are, you know where the feet are, but you don't know what to do afterwards. Pretend like you're actually gonna climb it, but don't climb it. Envision yourself doing the move. I think that will give you that plan, so when you actually get on the wall, you don't have to do that thinking in the moment. You got a plan? Let's put it to action and see what happens. So we... Yeah, you got it. Nice. Definitely helped. I think that, I think it's hard for me to plan the hands and the feet. Like I need to have my feet on properly before sometimes I can go for the hands. It seems go for the reach first and then your feet will come afterwards. It's actually the reverse. Between what you envisioned in your head and what actually happens, like how close do you think you were to being correct? 70%. I think mm -hmm. the more the part that I wasn't thinking about was like bringing the foot out to there. I, didn't even, I don't even think I even noticed that hold mm -hmm. originally. And then I'm a person who likes to bump the hand versus cross over sometimes. It looks like when you were doing your planning, you were planning mostly with the hand sequences. I didn't notice you thinking about where you're putting your foot. It comes with time, so most people have an easier time planning where their hands are gonna go, and then you have to think about where the feet go afterwards, and there can be a disconnect. When you get really good at sequencing, you should be able to do both. Something that I like to talk about with people when I'm doing sequencing drills is what makes a handhold or what makes a foothold. There are ways to identify it, like this one. Is this a handhold or a foothold? Hand. Yeah. Or is it both? So what tells you it's a handhold? Other than, like, of course this is a big hold. Chalky? Yeah, it's got a lot of chalk on it. That means yeah. someone has grabbed it. How do you tell if it's a foothold? I would say because of the orientation, but also a lot of footholds have a lot of like black from a lot of rubber on them yep. too. That's exactly what I was gonna tell you. So if you're wondering whether someone's standing on it or not, you look for the, the rubber on the, on the hold. The next available option is this left hand Gaston, mm -hmm. right? But but you have no feet, right? There's no feet that you can reach. Uh, like this thing is gone as soon as you go to that hole. So your next available option is either to come back to this or use that hole. But I think that if you were to do it, you get to that hole, and then if if you just try really hard to like rip those two holds apart and mm -hmm. hold the opposition, engage your core to bring up your foot. Nice, nice. That foot is really far away, and there's no way that I'm gonna be able to sustain it with that move. This is a tactic that I started doing, at least it works in this gym. I can reach from like hand to foot 
a certain number of tina's. It makes looking at the wall and visualizing where your feet are a lot easier. You know, this foot is only good for this hold, but it right. won't be for that one because after I get outside of that range, my core is so outstretched that I can't sustain that movement anymore. So the other thing I noticed is when you were grabbing this, you're grabbing it like this. Like this. You're not on it. So I think when you do your toe and you cross, you have some time to just like readjust. Just like, just like When you first looked at this, what told you that this was a right hand and not a left hand? Probably from the way the chalk is down there like that. Well, so yeah, I looked at it and I, it's, it's oriented to the left. When I grab it with my right hand, my thumb is right here and you can see this big outline of chalk. So when I put my thumb on it, on my right hand, it lines up perfectly. When I put my left hand on it, there is still chalk over here, but it's not nearly as dense as on this side. where it is to just, like what you said, engaging at the proper time. Because I think I wait till I grab, and then I'm like, okay, now I have to go for the strength. But it's almost like one fluid, like grab and pull. And even that's a significant part of the sequence, I feel like. This boulder is you know, at the upper end of your ability range. So every attempt matters. Every time you try it, you get more and more tired and then every attempt you don't succeed, you have to do it again, yeah. right? And, and you're coming at it with less energy each time. If you could visualize the correct way to do it the first time, then you don't have to expend a bunch of energy trying to figure it out. And you end up throwing yourself on it over and over and over again, and then by the time you actually figure out how to do it, you're tired and you can't. Personally, like I feel great even getting one more move that I couldn't do, whether or not that means I completed the problem, I think that that's gonna come with a little bit more time on this blue one. Even just getting one more move is what hooked me on climbing in the first place and being able to use these like little tips, small adjustments, um, and within five minutes I was able to progress and that feels really great. All right, so Good the, job, coach. <laughs> this is uh, this V2 is something that you've done already, it's pretty easy for you, it's like maybe a warm up. The orange one right here. Even though you've done it before, I think that we could improve upon how you're doing it. You know what the hand sequence is because you've already done it. Okay, so the area that I want to focus on is this one right here. Yeah. Because when I watched you climb that, I watched you get to these to two holds here. And of these four feet, you only used this one and this one? I think that I only used two because get to the hold a little bit quicker, but I think that I did skip a handhold there. I think seemingly I was making it easier for myself, but it required me to make almost like a bigger move up top. We're gonna use all four feet this time. So you start with the two that have the pieces of tape on them. <clears throat> and then instead of crossing your right foot all the way to this one, I'd like you to just walk it simply to that one. Okay. And then I want you to unwind it to this one, and then like that. What I want you to do is I want you to time it with your movements of your hands. So you're going to this hold from this foot, right? Mm -hmm. Then I want you to walk your foot through and unwind. Okay. That gives you like a triangular stance. It's like a two-step process, right? It's like move your feet, move your feet. Yeah. I think if you do this, 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 even if you're doing that, do you feel like this cross was less laborious? Yes, definitely. Because like, your your feet were were spread like this instead of being like right. this.
Did that feel a little bit better? Yeah, it felt a lot better. Even it being the warm up that it is for you, like this is not a challenging boulder problem for you, um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't climb it with precision and technique. All right, Zoe, we're gonna find out how many T-nuts long Zoe is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you think about your sequencing and you are looking at the hands and you're looking at the feet, you know that that's the most you can reach vertically. So if you look at a handhold and you say, okay, where should I put the foot? You know that if it's farther than 18 ounces away, you can't use it. It's also important to know that if you are fully outstretched because you're at, at your 18 ounce limit, you're not gonna be able to move because your core is gonna be so elongated that you're not gonna be able to actually pull. More than likely, you're gonna to wanna to operate into the six or seven T-nut range. I think that'll help you when you're thinking about your sequence. You say, okay, hand, hand, where should I do the foot? And then you just start counting. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a foot seven T-nuts away. This is the one I'm gonna use. The same thing can be done when you measure your wingspan. One, two, three, four, five. Six, Same thing. So you're pretty even as far as what you can reach both vertically and horizontally. Cool. But the same thing, like you don't want... You, you, it's gonna this be is a very uncomfortable position to be in. You want to be in like a position like this. So maybe you're looking at closer to six. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. And I will catch you later. <laughs> thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See, See ya. ya. Nice, Zoe. Yep, come on. Nope. Ow! There it is. Put those feet back on. Nice. Pocket.